What's up, y'all? It's K Manula with Sip Talk, where every day is a great day to create. Remember, passion fuels your purpose. So today, we're going to be sipping and talking with Eddie. What's up? Tell me about yourself. All right, how y'all doing? Uh, I am Eddie Platt. I am illustrator and caricature artist here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I've been doing caricatures for the last three years and I've traveled all over the United States doing it. Uh, and I've been doing illustration for a lot longer than that. And I do children's books, uh, characters, comic art, you name it. Uh, you can find my work at eddieplattart.com or on Instagram at eddieplattart or Facebook at eddieplattart. Check them out, you guys. So we're going to get into the first question. So I want to know, did you go to school for art or are you self-taught? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, I did go to the Art Institute of Atlanta for uh, game art and design. That's where I learned a lot of animation and character art development. Um, but I also have a painter's background as well, too. I went to a community college for that where I studied oil painting, acrylic painting, um, and I've been drawing since I was four years old. I mean, Dragon Ball Z, Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> you name it. Any cartoon character that was out, Spider-Man, Superman, I drew them because I just, I love that type of, of medium. I think that's pretty dope. That's how I started as an artist too, just drawing random stuff on my mom's wall. Sorry, mom. Mm -hmm. um, but just different characters like Mickey Mouse or like growing up, my favorite characters was Invader Zim and Pink in the Brain. So when mm -hmm. I was able to actually have a studio, my first mural that I put on the wall in my mom's basement was Pink in the Brain mm -hmm. and Invader Zim. So just um, when I think about just a lot of little kids or people who start off drawing, like they draw what they like, what they see all the time, and then they just build up from that. So I think that's really dope that, you know, you have that experience in college and then also you're self-taught as well. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of, it's like, how can you go to school for art? Like, no one can teach you how to, to draw. You know, like, they have, you know, the techniques and the basics that you need to know, the foundation, and then you just build on, on top of that. So that's cool. Woo cool. <laughs> um, so... Did you ever get uh, a lot of requests when you were in high school, in elementary school, middle school to get drawn? Especially when you're talking about drawing characters and stuff. Ooh, draw me, I bet you can draw me. So it's crazy because um, I remember when I was younger, like I would like make like little Christmas cards and just little cards and stuff to give to my family. I'm like, you know, I want to give you guys something, but I'm broke, so I'm just gonna make this little card or something. But I, it wasn't really until I got out of college where I really wanted to show my artwork to people and they was like, hey, I want a commission or, you know, I want to buy this piece. Um, mm -hmm. Because at first I was really self-conscious about my artwork. I was just creating just to, you know, create and to, you know, release, you know, whatever it is that I had going on. Um, so, yeah, so um, that's how I did that. Um, so out of all the career choices, why did you decide to become a digital artist? Um, well, digital is just the new direction of art. It is the wave at the moment. I mean, digital is the new direction of everything. Um, we have so much access now mm -hmm. to be able to grow and learn and produce as artists going down the road of being digital. And traditional medium also translates as well too. So you could take your traditional painting skills and go into a digital app now and produce almost the equivalent in quality of work mm -hmm. and then be able to produce and, and uh, sell it to a wider margin of our, of our audience out there just based off of social media, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube now. You can record your process and mm -hmm. show people your process um, even if you're not doing digital as far as the actual artwork itself, even if you were just setting up a canvas and painting traditionally, mm -hmm. you can still set up a camera right behind that and show your audience what you're mm -hmm. doing. And people are very interested in that. People yeah. want to know the story behind what's going on now. 
So it's it's more marketable, it's more uh, easy to access for a lot of people who don't know mm -hmm. what's out there as far as art is concerned. And mm -hmm. when I traveled doing caricatures, I would run into a lot of people who've never seen people do caricatures like really? how we would. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Or if they did, they wouldn't do it the way that we did it because we used airbrush, for uh -huh. example. And just being able to see that visually now mm -hmm. with YouTube right now, again, with Facebook, with Instagram, mm -hmm. we can just capture such a bigger audience. We can go more into a self-owned, self-published uh, direction when we're talking about being an artist. And mm -hmm. I think it's important that we actually be able to take more ownership of our own work at this point. I do, I definitely agree because if you want to be a successful artist, you know, just a successful creative, you know, you have to move with times. Like you might be a traditional oil painter, but you know, you might not want to actually pick up a tablet and and create a piece, but you know, people might be interested in a time lapse video or how you created it, you know, because oil to me is amazing. I'm too lazy to sit up there and wait <laughs> for it to dry. So if I yeah. use to do watercolor or acrylic or other different mixed medias, but you know, like people are really fascinated with how we create it's like it's a magic trick or something mm -hmm. even when i'm looking at an artist and seeing like the beginning product to the end when sometimes we have some artists that come to the studio and sit museum and i'm just like wow like you created that like mm -hmm. it could be as simple as like a circle but it's like a dope ass circle right but right. um yeah no like i i definitely think you know you if you're not on facebook get on ig on youtube like some type of social media some type of digital platform so you'll be able to reach different types of audience mm -hmm. and you know you want to, especially if you want to make it a career, you know, mm -hmm. like you got to figure out who your audience is and how you're going to meet that audience. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely dope for sure. That is the most important thing as far as going in a career direction. You want to get your work out there, even if you don't like any particular social platform, even if you don't like Facebook, for example, and I can't stand Facebook, but I have one. Um, mm -hmm. Instagram is a great platform for being able to put your work out there. Um, Twitter is a great platform, believe it or not, to put really? your work out there. Yes, Twitter will get you massive access to not just an audience as far as just the everyday person, but the industry that you may want to be interested in as well too, especially if you're wanting to go into animation, if you're wanting to go into game art, Twitter is big for that. Um, there's Behance, which is an online portfolio site as well, too, that you can get into. Um, and Behance is good for uh, artists of all different mm -hmm. ranges and varieties, whether you're a visual artist, whether you're getting the film, whether you're into animation, you can definitely get into uh, Behance and be able to put your work out there that way. But there's tons of platforms as far as social media is concerned that you can get into to get your art out there. I've definitely heard of Behance when I was in school um, when I wanted to get inspiration about like graphic design or like branding, you know, and marketing and promoting things um, Behance. That's all I was on trying to find inspiration. But then also you can find jobs on Behance as well. Yes. You know, you might be able to, you can download like mock-ups for t-shirts and it's just like, you know, it's Behance is definitely like a dope platform. and. Um, you know, you just gotta see what's out there. Yeah. Like, absolutely, if you want your art to expand, like, you definitely gotta see what's out there. Yes, and I'm glad you touched on that because I actually find a lot of my jobs from uh, social media. So, Facebook, Instagram are actually two of the biggest platforms that I use to get a lot of commissions for my illustration projects. Mm -hmm. I also use Facebook a ton. Uh, especially before the pandemic hit, to find festivals, to find fairs, mm -hmm. to find gig events and things like that. Uh, I've gotten birthday parties, mm -hmm. I've gotten um, barbecue parties, weddings, you name it. I have gotten massive amounts of contacts on just Facebook alone um, and Instagram as well too. Again, from putting my artwork out there, from reaching out and finding my audience for joining different groups and networking. Social media is just crucial for that. So if you are definitely interested in going into business for yourself, mm -hmm. you have to have some sort of social media branding in order to reach your audience. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with you. Um, so 
how do you even put a price tag on this your artistry like how do you even like yeah how do you put a price tag on your artistry a client you're like well how much is it for a book and you give them a price you're like what that's expensive yeah that's definitely the case sometimes well the thing is is if i'm going to do a children's book um i have to assess one how much time it's going to take me but i try not to fall into the pitfall of charging myself an hourly rate not for children's books anyway because there's so much more that goes into it I try to break down the process. I need to know um, how the children's book needs to be planned. What's the script gonna look like? What are the characters gonna look like? I need to be able to visually create all of that. I need to also be able to plan each page, the cover page, the mm -hmm. title page. We have to think about marketing. There's so many things that goes into it. And basically I would be robbing myself if I was to think about it as an hourly rate. Right. So what I do is I actually think about it in terms of how long would it take me to comfortably work on this children's mm -hmm. book? Will it take me two months? Will it take me four months? If it's on average about a 25 to 30 page children's book, which is around the average of most children's books, it will probably take me two to three months. And I would uh, then assess how much money do I need per month to be able to work on that children's book and I price mm -hmm. by that. So as a minimum, I start my price range at 2,500. And the reason why I started at that price range is because if I was to take at least one month in order to, to crank out that children's book, mm -hmm. that's how much money I would need to sit down for one solid month and work that thing day in to day out, morning to night, sun up, sun down, however you want to break it down. I like, I, I definitely like that you just broke that down because a client would be able to understand that. But then also as an artist, as a creative, you have to understand you know if it's commissions or different art pieces you know it takes time so you want to think about the supplies that you have to buy you know the time that it takes to create it like don't be afraid to price your work like what is what is your worth don't lowball your worth um yeah. so you guys we we're going to get into this sip and talk with eddie he's going to show us a process of his digital art so to demonstrate uh the process of caricatures i decided to do a uh caricature of brianna taylor um who as you know has been murdered from police breaking into her home and shooting her in her sleep um justice for brianna taylor so you will begin to see, uh, I've already laid out the sketch work and I'm now uh, laying down hard lines. These are what I call final line art, um, where you'll see line weight, you'll see me uh, making decisions on how I want to place each and every line so that I get the look exactly as I'm uh, wanting to reflect off of, of her likeness. Uh, I want to be able to, you know, focus on what her eyes look like, what her nose looks like, the shape of her lips. Um, I, those are all very crucial just in this area of the face to gather likeness of a person when you're drawing them. Um, once I get the lines down and I have everything placed the way that I like, you'll see me transition into a coloring process. And how I tend to color my work digitally is I start with a flatting process where I basically lay each color down and I can do it in a way where I can just use the paint bucket tool to change any color that I want. Um, it allows me to be able to get the colors exactly the way I want them to look before I start adding any detail into them. And then I will switch over to new layers. I always work in layers when it comes to digital process. Uh, so that way if I make any mistakes when I'm doing the detail and the rendering, I'll be able to correct that by either just simple erasing or if the layer is completely unusable, I'll just delete it and start right back over without losing too much progress. Uh, so you'll see me break down uh, skin, the shirt, uh, the texture of the hair. Um, I'm using various different techniques, uh, different brushes to be able to capture the highlights in their hair, to be able to get the texture that I want in the skin. Um, I'm thinking about lights and shadows of how the light is hitting her face and where the shadow is going to be placed as well too. Um, according to that light, as I'm laying each color down, 
And when I finally get done with the rendering of the shirt, that's when I'll start thinking about background placement and uh, things of that nature. Um, but it's a very straightforward process when it comes to caricatures. Since I'm focusing on the face, it's not very uh, much that I need to think about as far as the body or the structure. The hand is there just because that's what you see in the photo. Um, but I typically just try to focus on drawing what I see and then exaggerating certain features when it comes to caricatures because that's what makes a caricature is the exaggeration of it. I think it's amazing just looking at how you started with the sketch and then, you know, how you just had the different variations of colors. You know, okay, I wonder what he's gonna color first, you know. Um, and just the just the build up of everything, it was just really amazing. Um, just seeing just the finished the finished product and that, you know, it it looks so effortlessly. Like you were just, you know, like it took like I don't even know what to even say, but I, I'm I'm so I'm so excited that you were on the show. I hope you guys enjoy the show and tell. Um, and thanks so much, Eddie, for sitting and talking with us. Let our dope viewers know how can we reach you, how can we connect, how can we get a character. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much for having me. Um, again, you can find me at eddieplatt.com. Uh, that is my website. Uh, I am also on social media at Eddie Platt Art for Facebook and Instagram, um, Eddie Platt for Twitter. Um, you can also find me on Behance as well too, all under the same name. Um, I try not to change my handle so that way I'm easy to find on all platforms. Uh, you will be able to also purchase a caricature from me uh, in a few weeks once I get the online store live and up and running. Uh, you'll be able to purchase a character from me on any of those social media platforms or on my website as well too. So definitely check me out. Thank you guys. To my dope viewers, what are you doing today? What steps are you taking to further your creative path? Drop those comments below so we can sit and talk about it. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and subscribe at Sit Museum ATL as well as on IG, Sit Museum, ATL, Facebook, Sit Museum, and www.sitmuseumatl, Atlanta Ho. Um, I just had to put that in. Hashtag, 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 hashtag. Are you from Atlanta? Oh, you did say that. Yeah. Okay, you are. You are. So anyway. <laughs> So yeah, so thanks so much you guys for tuning in to Tip Talk where every day is a great day to create and passion fuels your purpose. Peace. Peace. I think I said anything.